Welcome to this video tutorial here on virtual music tutorials. My name is Lars Eichstedt and in this tutorial video we are going to take a look at how to combine different articulations of the strings section of symphonic orchestra. So um, to everyone who is new to virtual music tutorials I want to say welcome. Browse through the channel you'll find a growing collection of video tutorials about different libraries of East-West and Quantum Leap, um, how to make them sound realistic, what you can do, some tips and tricks um, yeah, to get the most out of this library. And all of the tutorials are designed cross-platform, so you don't have to worry uh, if you don't use Cubase, which I assume many won't use it. Um, all the principles I'll show you, you can apply to your sequencer, so you don't have to worry. So well, just uh, sit down, relax a little bit, and uh, yeah, let's take a look how to combine different articulations in the string section of Symphonic Orchestra. And of course, like the Facebook page, Virtual Music Tutorials, if you like the videos, and subscribe to the channel. So now all these things is done, let's go right into it. And uh, yeah, first of all, let's listen to the little piece I composed here. It's nothing fancy, just a little bit, uh, yeah, for demonstration purpose. And then let's take a look what we can do with it. So that is actually the piece in its rough form, so only the notes are programmed. And well, now we have to go into all the automation and humanizing stuff. So um, yeah, the first thing you may notice when combining different articulations together and just taking them and using the same velocity for all them, they the transitions are often not very organic. Very easily to see when we take a look at the 11 violins. Oh yeah, before we'll start with this, let's have a quick look at which articulations I'm uh, using for uh, the strings. Sorry, um, basses are playing basic uh, pizzicato and uh, legato sounds. Um, cellos using pizzicato sounds and also a legato patch. Well, actually, just very quickly show you into the browser what we're using. Yeah, uh, it's a portato legato patch for the basses. Uh, it's a nice double patch, let's put it like this. Uh, it starts with the portato note and then if you play notes after this one legato, it will switch to a legato sound. Like so. The cellos are using a Bartok uh, pizzicato and also a portato legato. Um, the violas, soft legato, sustained, soft legato, Bartok pizzicato with round robin of three. The violins using spiccato patches and also a sustained vibrato, soft legato patch, 18 violins, pizzicato and sustained vibrato, soft legato. You'll find these patches in the long folder and in the short folder. So for example, the 18 violins, the long, there is a sweep soft leg. <laughs> okay, it's right. Good. That's very quickly what they're actually doing. And now let's, let's listen to the spiccato and uh, sustained legato articulation. Um, just listen to the transition. So we hear actually the differences in loudness and volume are uh, very strong in some parts, especially in this uh, yeah, stair-like movement. 
we really hear it. It doesn't sound like this. It's just uh, the, the the spiccato notes are yeah, just popping out and it's way too loud. So uh, first thing we can then see through this when combining different articulations together. First of all, make sure that the loudness is equal or it seems believable how the loudness, the volume uh, yeah, progresses, let's put it like this. So first thing we'll use for this is uh, velocity controls. So what I do, I'll uh, uh, yeah, open both MIDI tracks at once so I can see on one layer, as you can see here, here are the, the highlighted ones, here are now the spiccato notes, and I can switch to another layer, and there are my legato patches. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's have a listen to the right beginning. Okay, so definitely we now have to make a decision, do we want to make the spiccato ones a little bit, little bit lower, a little bit quieter, or do we want to crank up the legato sound? Actually, um, often it's for me kind of a trial and error, I see what works better. Um, what I'll do in this case, first of all, is to, uh, taking care uh, about the, the spiccato um, notes uh, in them themselves, because now we can see where the, the same velocity, um, but I want them to rise a little bit. So I'm uh, first of all making sure that the general shape is right. I'll cut them down a little bit. Um, like we already discussed it in the spiccato, uh, the staccato and um, yeah, pizzicato video, these principles like uh, cutting down uh, second notes um, to make them a little bit lower in uh, volume or in loudness to uh, yeah, make it make them sound a little bit more uh, realistic. So if you're new to this and doesn't really know the principle behind this, uh, check out the staccato video and the pizzicato videos. There all these techniques are explained in depth. All right, so. And we can already see just through you, yeah, just by this little change, the transition is way nicer. But still very strong. So uh, I'll cut them down a little bit more. And now I think, well, okay, let's crank up the legato. And it's still not quite nice. Okay, so we're kind of getting to the to what we want. Um, As you see here, it's a lot of it's a lot of trial and error here. Um, so it's definitely something you have to spend some time on. Um, of course, in this tutorial, I can't do it as detailed as I would when I'm working um, alone, uh, because then the video would be, I think, two hours or so, I don't know, but it's way too long. So just here we're gonna, yeah, we'll just take a look how it's done, and then the final, or the, the, the parts, the real work you have to put in, of course, uh, yourselves. So here's just um, how it's actually done. So I then take a look at the legato ones here again. I'll see that I get the shape of them right, and then go to the spiccato ones and cut them down. So it's and sometimes it happens that you take a look at this phrase here and say, well. Actually, it's too quiet. So then you can see, okay, let's see, can I crank up the legato sound even more, but actually the transition 
is not very nice and if you come to this point where you really start tweaking a lot and uh, thinking well is this better no make it loud this one quieter and you're just not really satisfied then choose another articulation so we go into play when we get this problem and we may see all right so actually the soft legato is not suitable for us because actually or probably because it's a soft legato it won't blend very well with the strong spiccato ones so we then say okay let's replace them then with another one so i'll choose the sus leg uh, articulation it starts with the sustain note and then comes to a legato note the second way if you play them legato one after each other so uh, yeah double click replace current to first of all replace the aid in violence um, and then we are doing the same thing to the second violence or 11 violence um, so yes there we have it 11 violence long and we will also choose the sustained legato all right replace current and after we've done that we then go back now and see and hopefully it works now or will blend even better now so let's uh, first of all see ah right you can now hear we have a lot of more dynamic going on all right so now let's so that's actually better So you see now the blending is much better. very quickly you can yeah very quickly overdo it so uh, you see it's a lot it's sometimes not that easy to get nice transitions even though it's uh, such a parts like this where you have a lo long articulation and then comes a short one um, one thing you can do, uh, turn off the, the, the grid in that case. Oh, well, later on, of course, you will do the offsetting, of course. But what you can then do, give it a little bit of a gap. Just like they're resting a little bit and then playing there. There also find the right uh, amount. Kind of gets to the, what we want. Also, that's a basic principle how it's done. Um, so, if you've done that, close it. And then, of course, always look for efficiency. Do only do the amount of work that you really need to do. So, actually, um, the part. <coughs> sorry. This part here is the same as this one. So what we then do, because we already yeah, worked on this part, we just duplicate it to put it to this one. And I know that this part in the Aiden violence is just the same as the second violence are playing, but just an octave above. So I'm also doing this, duplicate it onto the uh, first violence track, open both tracks, select everything, and shift it up one octave and like this we now have th all these three parts yeah altered or uh, edited by only doing one part and just duplicating it to the others so now when we listen to this two together it should now if everything works right sound a little bit better than before
so well you can see um, that it somehow works but not very good that's because uh, of course well I'm using here pizzicato and not spiccato in the first balance so um, yeah actually I have to tweak a little bit I think let's listen to them yes definitely so uh, first of all let's just take the pizzicato ones and This one here, way down. Okay, and here you can also see that the articulations, or the, the patches, are very different from each other. something like this so actually of course if we were honest there is a lot of things we could do to this and um, it's really uh, it, it can be kind of, an, of a hassle at some point uh, really to get very deep into it but uh, later on we will also take a look at how to use expression to uh, give it more uh, more shape and there we can uh, well, let's see what we can do. I don't want to, um, yeah, uh, tell you any secrets we are going to discover. Um, yeah, so let's take the basis part. Very simple, very easy. Um, first of all, give it, it's, yeah, it's actually like that in the Pizzicato video. Give it its shape. do the evil thing because these two parts are the same as this delete them and boom, just duplicate them and you're ready to go and the pizzicatos of the cellos are just the same as the bases just an octave below uh, above so woo, we will be very bad we'll take it move it up like so and there we have it with the basses and the cellos ready in this first part. And something you can see besides that it now feels alive that uh, the little things we we uh, we still have in the violins, well, we could tweak more somehow blend away a little bit when you're hearing the whole thing together. So um, this is also something you should keep in mind when fiddling around. Always check back if you really hear uh, yeah the differences um, in the whole piece. If you don't hear them, don't spend the time on this. It's time you can use way better for other things like the mixing or mastering or other parts of the piece that really need more work. Always think efficient. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to this next part and here we also have efficiency. When we take a look, these three parts are all the same. So, yes, I think you already guessed it. We'll take this one. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, let's see a little bit of variation here. Cut down the notes a little bit. All right. This can be a lot more louder. Like so. Okay, and then there we 
go. Okay. And last thing here, the basses are oh, playing the same as the cellos, just an octave below. So, yes, exactly. Duplicate it. Select everything. Move an octave down. And there you have it. Well, but here we have a little difference. We have legato notes combined with pizzicato ones. So we we'll first of all uh, take this part, even though we could also start with uh, violas and violins here. Um, but because here it's not that much work like this one, I'll start with this one. Um, yeah, so let's listen to this. Sorry, I should mute it, of course, first like so <sighs> okay yes okay so we have to tweak this first here a little bit because it's a little bit weak And now we will take the legato ones, shift them a little bit down. Okay. Okay. So you see, sometimes some instruments are very kind and nice to you. They don't require that much work. And there are some others which are very mean to you. Which they want you to work a lot of them on them. Good. So that was that. Let's go to the violas. Pizzicato and legato sounds and sustained sounds together. So first of all, let's see. Okay, so again, legato is way louder than the Bartok pizzicato sounds. So I will first of all work on the short one. Okay, so this one here is pretty strong, I think. And something you can also do is, uh, if you have multiple notes together, to uh, shift the velocities a little bit independent. So I just move it across just so you can see it. This note here is a little bit a little quieter than this note here. Just uh, yeah, a little bit thing you can do to give it more vari variation. Now let's redo this all right like so just to get it in a place a little bit down okay so now let's listen again stronger yes I think that's quite nice um, and oh yes efficiency I know it you know it we can duplicate it very nicely here we only have to make sure that we have at the end copy these two ones I hope it's, you know what I mean. Actually, it's just take these two ones and move them green. But with the grid first. Later on, we'll offset. Okay. Down like so. Okay. This one is the same as this one, so let's duplicate it. Okay, next one. This part of the violins. Here we have spiccato and legato again. So I start with the pizzicato one. Yeah. 
if you have this uh, instant sound uh, feedback or playback like I have in Cubase you can also just click on the different notes and see how the transition sounds like So this was very nice, very quickly, and we can see, okay, we can just duplicate it and at the end erase these two because they were not meant to be there. Yes, and oh, let's see, the eight in violence are pretty much the same as this one here besides these last notes. So we quickly memorize c5 d5 all right quickly memorize what we had there and take this one here and of course it was an octave above like so and we had yes right it was a little bit different i think ha that's it man there you can see sometimes it happens that you can't work that easy. So just a quick demonstration how it can happen as well. So let's go quickly into both and yes actually there ah here is the difference second violence on the stay on the E and the first violence are only doing this. Alright so then <laughs> we can we can duplicate. Now we know how it's done. So shift it up and like so <laughs> there we have it just adjust them okay now we have this one done let's solo them and listen Well, something you can do. A little bit not that strong. Okay, and what also helps to see if everything is nice. Um, yeah, look away from the monitor or your, yeah, your screen. Um, yes, just have your ears. Okay, so very quickly, um, yeah, what we can do, we could, yeah, save it now. Um, but, uh, well, now we won't do this. <laughs> uh, we'll just move on. Um, and, yes, we're now going to do all the offset stuff, first of all. Well, offsetting is very easy. In uh, in most sequencers, you have some randomizing functions that you can use. Here is very quickly, uh, I'll show you how you do it. Uh, if you have, it, have to do it manually, we'll take the violas because they're a nice example because here we have several notes playing together. So you turn off your grid. Um, first of all, before you start everything, make sure that you relax because um, well, just listen what you have to do and then you know why you should be relaxed. You just take the notes and move them a little bit off the grid, like so. You don't have to do every one. Sometimes it's enough to do only some. Um, also, if you have long notes like this one, shorten them, make some a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter. And um, well, it's a very quick uh, guideline how the space you have between, uh, yeah, the space you have to the left and to the right to shift the notes. Uh, 128th note shows it very clearly. So one uh, little square you have available to the left and to the right to offset. Uh, try not to go over this uh, because then it can sound out of measure. Yes, so uh, actually that's what you have to do. 
if you have to do it manually and now I think you know why you should be relaxed and if you're not relaxed first then uh, see that you are before you uh, start yes for everyone else use your randomizing functions in your sequencer um, I'll now very quickly will offset the other stuff here and uh, pause the video till then and uh, then we'll continue Okay, so now that everything is nicely offset, or offset, um, we can now go in to the final part, and this is using uh, some, yeah, control changes. This part time uh, the expression CC11. <coughs> Sorry, to now give everything its final shape, because with CC11 you can give it just a little bit of extra touch. Let's put it like this. And of course you can do something um, against this very uh, straight and actually quite boring sounding legato sounds. Um, like for example here in the violas when we now listen. <laughs> yeah, that really sounds like a computer has done it. And actually that's not what we want, I think. So let's enable, <clears throat> sorry, let's enable the automation mode for your track. Give yourself a little bit of uh, space before and then, uh, yeah, just uh, try a little bit how it sounds like. Maybe something like this. You can then uh, see, okay, uh, yeah, I was a little bit too, went too low at this point here, so just put it up. A little bit comparison to this one and to our. It often helps if you do a little bit like these mountain uh, like shapes when you come to the end of the note just to go a little bit down um, yes yeah, so, ah, turn off the grid I don't have this nasty snapping here <laughs> and then of course mm -hmm. yes 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 what did I told you about if it, um, Yes, efficiency. You just take it and paste it. Ring, like so. Of course, you can do it uh, through the whole uh, part. Well, ten point half thousand there. Um, but unfortunately. Uh, or just because I want to yeah shorten or just to make sure that the videos are not that super long I'm uh, just doing it like this this time well that's interesting now what happens here why don't I hear anything ah yes volume I uh, turned down the volume I think yes well why did I? Uh, yeah, sometimes this happens. Okay, let's put it up. Now. Okay. Uh, then you can see, okay, uh, the, the violas, maybe I can give it a little bit more shape. You can see, maybe you can hear with uh, expression you can make these um, crescendos more way more obvious can you now take a look okay that was not good it's 
somehow I hope you can get the point um, yes let's take a look at this violence here for example um, yes there I no what's happening here oh um, yeah then no this take uh, the legato one of the second violence Oh, very nice. I recorded the basses legato. How wonderful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry for this. Not thinking. Okay. And for uh, let's see, especially in this parts when you have, you can really do this mountain movement <laughs> and go down, and you can see, or better hear, that the transition is now much better. I Longer, shorter. And like this, you go through your whole piece, and then, um, yeah, you're finished actually. We can go, the last thing we'll do is go to the pizzicato and make this upward run a little bit. Uh, stronger like so and um, yes as always I didn't turn on the automation stuff very great but you kind of got the principle um, yes and that is how you go through the, your whole piece you now give the exp with expression its final touch and last thing about expression um, the automation things stuff matters issues um, if you are not very sure how it could sound like always think about the character what you want to achieve with your a piece what character should have what emotions you want to carry to the listener and uh, it may sound strange to you but it really helps sometimes well for me it, it helps uh, when I just um, sit down for a moment close my eyes listen to the piece and during that when I'm focusing for example on the second violence I try to imagine being a string player playing these phrases these parts and then I try to imagine well how would I play it and then I kind of get the ideas how I yeah, want the, the progression of the loudness and uh, like this, I it's often for me much easier to then record the uh, automation stuff of uh, expression and uh, mod wheels sometimes. Um, yeah, so that brings me to the end. And uh, I said something about mod wheel. Next video will be about the DXF patches in Symphonic Orchestra. There was uh, for quite some months ago someone who asked me why I wouldn't use any of these DXF patches. Well, because they're a little bit different to the normal ones and unfortunately you don't have for any articulation uh, DXF patches, only for some. So I tried now to first of all show you best ways you can use the normal articulations that are available and in the next one 
we are going to take a look at what the XF patches are. They will use uh, CC, uh, the control change number one, uh, additionally to the control change 11. And yes, the then video after that will be a little cheating video because there I will show you how you can build your own DXF patches with, your, with a little workaround so that you have on some articulations where you could need one, you don't have something provided in the library, you can do this little workaround and build some patch yourself. So, hope you like this video. Um, subscribe, like the channel, um, like the Facebook page, uh, drop me comments uh, what you think about this video, if it helps you, if it's complete trash and I should read out the whole tutorial, say it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's critique and I need the critique because the videos I'm doing, I'm doing them for you and I want to do the best videos as possible to, uh, yeah, help you as best as possible. So, if any questions, drop me a, yeah, write me on my YouTube channel, write it in the Facebook page, write a comment. A um, lot of things you can contact me. If you don't want to contact me, then don't do it. Um, I'm in a very good mood today. Hopefully it was not that um, annoying and I hope I see you in the next video. Goodbye, have a nice day and have fun composing, of course.